Right, well, hi. Thought I'd start with a bit of Elizabethan music. Uh, this is a galliard, and we were just marching off, or dancing off the stage with Sir Toby and Sir Andrew, um, and to a galliard. Uh, so welcome to the second of my um, analyses of Twelfth Night. We're going to move on to through Act One today. Um, and uh, a different shirt, just to suggest that I do have more than one shirt, uh, and I've had a shave. You'll be really pleased about that, I'm sure. So we move into um, scene four, Orsino's Palace, back to Orsino's Palace, but we know that in the meantime, there has been a new comer at the, at the uh, court of Orsino, and that is Viola, who is now, of course, known as Cesario. Um, whether there's a hint at um, Cesario in there, uh, whether there's a hint at um, you know being ripped out of the sea, perhaps you can work that. You can like that if you want. But once again, we see evidence right from the start that. Viola is a special person. She's a she's very clever girl. She's very good, even though she's uh, playing a role now um, beneath her. She's very good at playing that role. Look at what Valentine says at the beginning here. If the Duke continue these favours towards you, Cesario, you are like to be much advanced. Of course, uh, as I'm sure you know, court life in those days depended on um, patronage. Uh, if you pleased the, the king, the Duke whatever, uh, or the Queen, then you were advanced, you were promoted, you, you gained favour. Um, he hath known you but three days and already you are no stranger. It's only taken three days for Viola to work her way into the court and into the um, liking of Orsino. Um, as I said uh, in the last video, you know, time is fairly imprecise in this in this play. Uh, three days. Well, later in the play, there's a mention of three months. Um, it's it's uh, it doesn't really mean anything. You can't you can't actually tie this play down to a to a chronology. Uh, the point being made here is it's only been three days. Well, says Viola, you either fear his humour or my negligence that you call in question the continuance of his love. Is he inconstant, sir, in his favours? Well, what do we know about Orsino? We know very well that he is inconstant in his favours. We know very very well that he is a changeable man. Um, humour, meaning mood there, um, from the old uh, medieval humours. Um, and um, so, uh, you know, is he inconstant? Yes, he is. Um, and uh, but of course, Valentine protects him and says, "No, believe me." Well, really, are you telling the truth, Valentine? Um, oh, watch out! Here he comes. Notice Viola's instant sort of standing to attention, um, stopping a, a conversation it, because the Duke is arriving. She's polite. She knows how to behave. I thank you. Here comes the Count. In comes Orsino, and look at the first thing he says. Who saw Cesario? Oh. Um, Oh, it's like sort of, hey, hey, you know, um, uh, just a, a shout, basically. Viola immediately jumps forward on your attendance, my lord, here. And the rest of them have to stand aloof, have to stand aside while he talks to Cesario. Again, more evidence of the fact that Cesario has made his, her way into um, Orsino's favour. Um and he's already been talking to her intimately. Thou knowst no less, but all I have unclasped to thee, the book even of my secret soul. Um, or see no connected to a book here uh, with a metaphor. We see that later in the play uh, um, when she is with Olivia. Um, so he's told her everything. Everything about Olivia, of course. Uh, so off you go. Address thy gate unto her. Go, go to her. Be not denied access. Uh, that's probably access. Um, be not denied access. Yes, yeah, stand at her doors. Just go with the rhythm there. Um, and tell them there thy fixed foot shall grow till thou have an audience. Till thou have audience. Uh, and you see how I'm trying to sort of indicate that the, the rhythm... Um, is important. Um, be, be not denied access. 
success stand at her doors and tell them there thy fixed foot shall grow. You hear how the, the rhythm trips along there with the beat uh, till thou have audience. Oh, but hang on, says Viola, the split line, um, suggesting that she jumps straight in. Sure, my noble lord, if she be so abandoned to her sorrow, sensible Viola, she, she, she's, she's trying to give him a bit of advice here. As it is spoke, she never will admit me. So, says Orsino, I don't care. Be clamorous and leap all civil bounds rather than make unprofited return. Um, propriety, civility, very important in this play. Um, rank, uh, class. Uh, it's important. It's important that you you behave in the correct way, in the right places. And of course, those who don't get their comeuppances. And also, uh, it's interesting to see how many people want to cross those boundaries. Olivia being the most important. Um, so says Orsino, I don't care. Uh, so, sorry, Viola says, you know, well, what if I do speak to her? What do I do? Oh, and unfold the passion of my love. Passion is a key word here again, another key word for us to, to remember. Passion, I will come back to that many, many times. Unfold the passion of my love. Surprise her put their military metaphor it's like a like a sort of ambush surprise her with discourse of my dear faith it shall become thee well to act my woes she will attend it better in thy youth than in annuncios of a more of more grave aspect um nuncio is a is a messenger um she she <sighs> Interesting how uh, Orsino's right. Um, maybe people know this about Olivia. She likes young men, um, and well, there's no good sending her a, a messenger, a nuncio of a grave aspect, a dull old person. Uh, she likes youth. She will attend it better in thy youth. No, says Viola, I think not so. No, dear lad, believe it. Look how affectionate he is there to Cesario. And this, of course, is a beautifully ironic speech. Um, all sorts of things you could see in this. Um, let's just have a read of it. For they shall yet belie thy happy years that say thou art a man. Diana's lip is not more smooth and rubious. Thy small pipe is as a maiden's organ, shrill and sound, and all is semblative a woman's part. Fascinating, of course. Beautifully ironic. You look like a girl. You sound like a girl. Well, of course she does. Um, notice another reference to Diana there. We had that with uh, with the Actian myth. Um, Diana, uh, goddess of chastity. Um, of course, Viola is 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 a, a maid, a virgin, um, and um, uh, also thy small pipe. Well, he's talking about um, he's talking about her voice, um, the, the, her voice pipe, her, um, and uh, it, you sound like a girl. The maiden's organ, shrill and sound, all is semblative. Everything looks like a woman's part. Um, once again, part, well, not once again. We have for the perhaps the first time. Uh, and not the last, uh, a reference to acting. You're playing a part. Uh, Viola is playing a part. Um, a little reference there I put there, you know, thy small pipe, maybe a little joke about uh, about um, sexual organs again. Um, but, uh, you know, more to the point, you look you're, you're perfect. You, you're so young. Your, your voice hasn't even broken. Your voice is shrill and sound. Thy constellation, uh, character, makeup, is right apt for this affair. Some four or five attend him, all if you will, for I myself am best when least in company. Oh, God, I want to be alone. Hmm. Uh, prosper well in this, and thou shalt live as freely as thy lord to call his fortunes thine. Well, as I've written there, as she does at the end, sorry, spoiler alert, um, you know, she, she will call his fortunes hers. Um, and um, then we get... A rhyming couplet and we suddenly have ourselves launched into the triangle um the love triangle here i'll do my best to woo your lady yet a bar full strife whoever i woo myself would be his wife uh oh she's fallen in love with orsino one wonders why but i suppose you know love is strange love is blind um so uh look at the sound here that that she uses maybe sort of quite, quite a sort of um a soft sound maybe showing how she feels rather rather sad about this um 
uh, to woo your lady, who where I woo myself would be his wife, and myself would be his wife. Um, so uh, Shakespeare making her sound uh, rather melancholy there, perhaps. Who e'er I woo myself would be his wife. Um, Barful strife, the bars. It's got it's it's got all sorts of impediments. It's got all sorts of barriers in the way. Um, so I I will do my job. I'll do my best to woo your your lady. I I will do your job. Um, I'll do what I'm told because I'm a loyal servant. But actually, I want you myself. So that's going to be a, a problem for Viola, um, and it's going to introduce, of course, lots of comedy later. And that was a very short scene, but we move on to um, a, a longer scene in scene five, and we meet Olivia for the first time. Uh, before we do, uh, we also meet Festy for the first time. Um, the I've, I've got here Clown. Um, you know, we don't we aren't told his name until quite late on, uh, or or until sort of halfway through the play. Um, you know, his name is Festy. It makes you think of festival, makes you think of revels, uh, which, of course, are key to um, this play. Um, <clears throat> and festy has been truanting, basically. He is Olivia's clown. He is Olivia's fool. Um, in terms of context, you know, you need to know about fools, um, about allowed fools. Um, it's a phrase, an allowed fool. Um uh, like a jester in a in a king's court who is given license is allowed to comment on the actions or behavior or words of um their master or mistress um but fest has been off uh, fest has wandered off perhaps to orsino's house um and therefore Olivia probably is not going to be very pleased about this. So Maria says that, you know, Maria, always, always wise. Uh, Nay, either tell me where thou hast been, or I will not open my lips of wide as a bristle may enter in way of thy excuse. My lady will hang thee for thy absence. Oh, says Festy, let her hang me. He that is well hanged in this world needs to fear no colours. Now we're going to get lots of wordplay here. Again, showing Maria's intelligence that she's she's on Festy's level. Festy is a very intelligent fool. It's a wise fool. Um, let her hang me. Um, he that is well hanged is that sexual? Uh, well, he makes it sexual in a moment. Um, you know, the, a good hanging um, uh, needs to fear no colours. Fearing colours, the colours on the battlefield, military colours, uh, possibly collars. Um, hanging, uh, so you know. Hang on, says Maria. What's what's all that about? Well, because he shall see none to fear, because he's dead. So he need, needs not fear any colours, because he'd be dead. He'd been hanged. Oh, Maria doesn't like that. A good Lenten answer. It's a poor answer. Lent is a, a time of fasting. A Lenten answer. I can tell thee where that saying was born by fear no colours. Where, good Mistress Mary? In the wars. Well, we still use that phrase, you'll be in the wars. In, in trouble, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, and that may you be bold to say in your foolery. Yeah, you won't be so You won't be so funny then, will you? Oh, says Festy, God give them wisdom that have it, and those that are fools, let them use their talents. Um, uh, we just had about don't hide your talents. Um, so, you know, it's a little reference back to that. Um, and, um, but the clown is, uh, Festy is, pretty philosophical about this and maria tries to warn him again yet you'll be hanged for being so long absent or to be turned away is not that as good a, as a hanging to you that's very important festy's whole livelihood relies on the favors that he gets from olivia um she feeds him she probably gives him pocket money um she she gives him a place to sleep if he were turned out he'd die on the streets He'd have nowhere to go. He'd had nothing to live on. Um, now, that's important, as we will see later, um, with Malvolio's response to uh, to Festi. Um, yet you'll be hanged. Sorry. Uh, 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 sorry. Yes, you'll, you'll be hanged for being so long absent or to be turned away. That's so you don't want to be turned out. The clown comes back with a joke, of course. Many a good hanging prevents a bad marriage. Definitely a sexual pun there. Uh, and for turning away, let summer bear it out. It'll be, uh, 
Turn me out in the streets if it's good weather. If it's the summer, I'll survive. Oh, says Marie, you are resolute then. Oh, no, not so. Neither, but I'm resolved on two points. And she joins in with this. You know, this is points are, uh, are sort of um, laces which hold up your breeches, your, your trousers. Uh, so if you undo them, then they fall down. And Maria knows this is an old joke. And she joins in. If one break, the other will hold. If the other, if both break, your gaskins fall. Uh, down come your trousers. Uh, well done, says Festy. Apt in good faith, very apt. You're a clever woman, as he says here. Go thy way. If Sir Toby would leave drinking, thou wert as witty a piece of Eve's flesh as any in Illyria. You're as you're as clever as the best man uh, around. Little reference there to Toby, possibly embarrassing Maria. We know later that Maria and Toby have a relationship, and um, sorry, spoiler alert, they get married. Um, and um, Thou wert as witty a piece of these flesh as any in Illyria. Uh, you're, you're good for how you look, as well as your brain. You're witty, um, and also you are a beautiful woman. You're like your Eve's flesh. Um, peace, you rogue. A little bit of embarrassment, perhaps, Maria. Uh, peace, you rogue. No more of that. Shh, don't talk about Toby. Uh, remember what I was just saying about um, class? Uh, Maria is Olivia's gentlewoman, and Sir, T Sir Toby is is way above her in class, if not in behaviour. Um, and so we're already possibly hinting at um, a, uh, a, a breaking down those class barriers in a relationship, and that's important to this play. Okay, so Maria pops off, um, warning him that you better make your excuse wisely. Um, and so the clown sort of addresses himself, um, a little, little tiny soliloquy, um, spoken to the audience. I mean, I've seen this done, you know, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll read it to you. Wit and be thy will put me into good fooling. Fooling. Those wits that think they have thee do very oft prove fools. And I, that I'm sure I lack thee, may pass for a wise man. For what says Quinapolis? Hmm? Better a witty fool than a foolish wit. So it's almost asking the audience, you know, it's, it's, surely they know who Quinapolis is. I mean, we all, you know who Quinapolis is. We all know Quinapolis. You know, it's obvious. Notice his intelligence could be mock intelligence, but he's, he's a mock authority, you know, using an authority um, for an argument, uh, bringing in, it's like bringing in evidence in, in an essay, um, <clears throat> what did Quinapolis apparently say? Probably not, but anyway, better a witty fool than a foolish wit. Okay, so, uh, you know, better to think you're a fool and remain intelligent than to pretend you're intelligent and actually look a fool. Um, so um, in comes Olivia. He's got to make his excuse. He's got to try and get back on her good side. Um, and he starts with, God bless thee, lady. Uh, remember, Olivia comes in. Um, if you know the, um, the Trevor Nunn film, uh, then you'll see that she's coming out of the chapel having been uh, you know, another memorial service for her dead father, her dead brother. So she's veiled, she's got black veil, um, Malvolio in attendance, dressed in black. So uh, the fool, probably in his multicoloured costume, in his motley, um, you know, the, the, the traditional sort of Harlequin, um, <clears throat> Harlequin costume, the, the, the party coloured uh, chevrons, I think they're called. Um, and so he, he is at odds with this black, with this mourning, as is Toby. See how we've got this, this differentiation in the play. Um, well, says Olivia immediately, take the fool away. And the clown, of course, he's going to try and be witty. Ha, do you not hear, fellows? Take away the lady. <gasps> he is an allowed fool. He is allowed to be slightly rude to his mistress. Um... No, says Olivia, go to. You are a dry fool. You're empty. Yeah, I've written there like Sir Andrew was. You're empty of jest. You, 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 you're not funny anymore. I'll know more of you. This is quite lighthearted. Uh, she's not really angry. Um, it, it, it's, it's just quite, you know, fun. It's, it, it, not supposed to use the word anymore, but it's a bit of banter. Uh, besides, you grow dishonest. Oh, easy to sort, says Festy. Two faults, Madonna. Um, nothing to do with um, 
the uh, famous singer, but uh, Madonna, my lady. No two faults, Madonna, that drink and good counsel will amend. Forgive the dry fool drink, then is the fool not dry. Notice again, we're taking something literally that is meant as a metaphor. Um, words are slippery things in this play. You can mess about with them all the time. Uh, you say, you say, I'm a dry fool. Well, I'll have a drink then. Um, bid the dishonest man mend himself. If he mend, he is no longer dishonest. So, you know, find some sort of forgiveness. If he cannot, let the botcher mend him. Well, I've put at the top there, a botcher is a mender, mender of clothes. So, so patches things up. Um, the suggestion that, you know, if, if I am dishonest, I, I can at least patch myself up. But, of course, a patch is temporary. So, we're back to that theme of appearance and reality to a certain extent of, of, of what the surface might mean. Anything that, that's mended is but patched. Virtue that transgresses is patched with sin. Sin that amends is but patched with virtue. See, that, that, that's all saying the same thing about three times. Um, that, you know, I can patch myself over. I can, I can make myself better. Whether it lasts or not is another question. And whether, whether it's true to what's inside you is another question. If that this simple syllogism will serve so. If it will not, what remedy? What can I do about it? As there is no true cuckold but calamity. Okay, let's have a look at that. Uh, calamity is a cuckold. Uh, a cuckold is is uh, traditionally was, a, was seen as a horned uh, being, a man who um, whose wife was um, unfaithful to him. A uh, husband whose wife was unfaithful to him uh, was said to bear horns like a cuckold, uh, and, and and was called a cuckold. Um, so uh, Festi is saying that, you know, calamity is a cuckold, uh, that she will be unfaithful with her sorrows, with her calamity, um, that she will give up on all this mourning. And he's quite right, because look at this. I've highlighted it here, this perfect line. This is a key quotation to the whole play. Beauty's a flower. I'll come back to that in a sec. The lady bade take away the fool. Therefore, I say again, take her away. She's the fool. He's going to prove it in a minute. OK, um, oh, I put in the, the little note there. So I am only a bit bad. You know, um, maybe I'm patched with sin, patched temporarily. There's a suggestion of that as well. Let's go back to Beauties of Flower. If you were in a classroom now, I would say, why is beauty a flower? The obvious answer is because it fades. Um, and this is linked absolutely to Carpe Diem. Okay, Carpe Diem comes from a, a poem by Horace, um, and uh, who was a Roman poet. And uh, Carpe Diem, it, <clears throat> it's often translated as seize the day. Um, it, it, it links with cutting um, Carpe, it links with the word to cut. Um, and it, it, it's, it's partly about cutting the flowers, you know, um, so cutting, cutting the buds. Beauty is a flower, it won't last. So you need to live. This is what Festi is implying. You can't, as a beautiful young woman, you can't hide your beauty away. If you do, then you're not making the most of life. Carpe Diem says, get out there and make the most of life. Um, uh, famously, uh, Herrick, uh, do look it up. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. Um, a famous poem by Herrick, a famous Carpe Diem poem. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. Old time is still a flying. Um, time is moving on. Death will come. And of course, vitally in the 17th century, and I suppose ever since, for especially for a noble person, it's important that you have children. Um, and therefore, if you if you hide away, it's destructive. Many of Shakespeare's sonnets are about this as well, Early, some of the early sonnets in the sequence. Um, it's destructive to hide your beauty away. It, it's, and, and Violet comments on this to her later. It, it, it's not for you to reserve your beauty. It's not for you to hide your beauty. You've got to share it. You've got to make, you've got to make a copy through a child. Um, so that's an absolutely key theme, absolutely key quotation there for it. Um, just keep hold of those ideas. No, says Olivia. Sir, I paid them take away you. I'm not the fool. Oh, no. Big mistake. Miss Pridgen, big mistake. In the highest degree, Lady Cuculus non facit monarchum. Literally means the hood does not make the monk. Uh, my motley, the 
party coloured um, costume that I'm wearing uh, is not in my brain. That's as much to say I wear not motley in my brain, unlike Sir Andrew, as I've written there. Andrew's pretty pretty foolish in his brain. I'm not foolish in my brain. I may be foolish on the outside. Oh, we're back to that theme. Appearance, reality, what am I like inside? What am I like outside? Uh, the hood does not make the monk. Just because a monk wears a, wears a monk's habit doesn't make him a holy man. Give me leave to prove you a fool, good Madonna, he says. Oh, really, says Olivia. You can see how she's She's actually having a bit of fun here. Um, can you do it? Oh, dexterously. Yes, I can. I'm brilliant at it. Um, good, Madonna. Make your proof. Oh, I must catechise you for it, Madonna. A catech catechism. A series of questions. Uh, I've put there an academic style inter interrogation. The catechism is in the church as well. Um, uh, Possibly, I've written there, possibly, you know, Malvolio's listening to this. Malvolio doesn't like Festi, as we'll see. I mean, they're polar opposites. Um, and possibly he's trying to show how clever he can be, uh, catechise you. I can be I can be philosophical. I can be intelligent. Um, good my mouse of virtue. Affectionate term here. Uh, answer me. Well, sir, for want of other idleness, I'll bide your proof. Oh, Let's bide the time, shall we? Let's pass a few minutes with this fool. Good Madonna, why wants thou? <laughs> Good fool for my brother's death. Oh, I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool. Ha! The more fool, Madonna, to mourn for your brother's soul being in heaven. Take away the fool, gentlemen. I won. OK, hopefully you can all understand that without me going through that. Um, and, you know, it, it's a question and answer. It's a philosophical device. Um, and he has won. He's proved her a fool. The more fool Madonna to mourn for your brother's soul being in heaven. Olivia turns to Malvolio. What do you think of this, Malvolio? What do you think of this fool? Does he not mend? We just talked about mending. Is he, is he improving? Oh, dear. So we have Malvolio traditionally dressed in black as I've said. Uh, later, he is said to be a, a kind of Puritan. Um, there are a number of hints um, at the fact that he is of that side um, in England at the time, um, the Puritan side. You know the traditional uh, way that Puritans are depicted, the way that they dress, dressed in black, uh, the women not allowed to show any flesh, um, Cromwell later, 40, 50 years later, will be um, will be uh, banning uh, the theatres, will be closing the theatres, will be banning Christmas as a festival and turning it into a fast. Um, and so Malvolio has that sort of lack of fun within him. Oh, as it shall do till the pangs of death shake him infirmity that decays the wise does ever make the better fool um, suggesting that Festi will be the best fool when he dies his folly will grow until he dies then he'll be the most foolish um, infirmity old age disease plague we've had mentioned already um, so um, infirmity as you get older um, he will become more foolish. Oh, says the Festi, God send you, sir, a speedy infirmity for the better increasing your folly. I wish you'd cheer up a bit, and I hope you get old, and I hope you get old, uh, decaying and, and diseased. So, so, sir Toby will be sworn that I am no fox, but he will not pass his word for tuppence that you are no fool. Um, yeah, I am no fox, a, a, a clever, witty animal, but... Um, Sir Toby would pledge, would pass his word, or would not pledge, would not pass his word for tuppence that you are no fool. You are a fool. You can see that these two don't like each other. Oh, Olivia likes a little bit of a little bit of a spat here. How say you to that, Malvolio? And this is key. It's highlighted, um, as I've put here, this is key to the enmity in the play and is, of course, repeated at the end of the play. Or it's misquoted, but, you know, why should it be accurate? Um, it's, infest it's going to lodge in Festi's brain. I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. Barren, empty. I saw him put down the other day with an ordinary fool that has no more brain than a stone. Look you now, he's out of his guard already. Lest you laugh and minister occasion to him, he is gagged. 
Now, that is key because of what I said about his livelihood. Without Olivia's patronage, he's lost everything. That last phrase, unless you laugh and minister occasion to him, he is gagged. He relies on your laughter and your patronage in order to survive. Um, I saw him the other day put down, you know, in some sort of petty argument by an ordinary fool. Um, and look at him now. He, he's, he's lost for words. He's out of his guard. Um, and so, you know, possibly Festy does look a bit uncomfortable because Malvolio is, is Olivia's steward. He's the head of, of, of the household in terms of head of the servants. And um, he... Uh, you know, he, he is, he's a dangerous character, really, in, ter in these terms. I protest, I take these wise men, the crow, so are these set kind of fools, no better than the fool Zanies. A Zany is an assistant clown, he's like an a assistant to a, to a clown. Um, and the, the, these wise men, the crow, so, that laugh out loud at these set kind of fools, no better than the fool Zanies. He's, he's just, he's, he's a rubbish fool. Oof. Real insult. Um, and uh, he's also saying, wise men that crow, wise men that laugh at these fools. Is he suggesting that Olivia is, um, is Olivia, is Olivia one of the, the full zanies? Um, well, Olivia speaks up for him. Oh, you are sick of self-love, Malvolio, and taste with a distempered appetite. To be generous, guiltless, and of free disposition is to take those things for bird bolts that you deem cannon bullets. You say it's a big thing. It's not. It's just bird bolts. Just bird shot, scatter shot, not a cannonball. Um, look at that. Perhaps I should have highlighted that. You are sick of self-love. Remember, or see no until I'm sick, uh, that surfeiting the appetite may sicken and so die. Um, and... You taste with a distempered, a diseased, a, 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 a sort of malformed appetite. Um, and you really need to be generous and a free disposition. Um, there's no slander in an allowed fool. There it is, an allowed fool. There's no slander in an allowed fool, though we do nothing but rail. Rail is complain, moan. Nor no railing, looking at Malvolio perhaps, nor no railing in a known discreet man, though he do nothing but reprove. So she's speaking about both. Um, and, you know, she does say that he's a known discreet man, but earlier in the speech she said he was distempered, sick. Hmm. Well, we will see. Fest is really pleased with this. Now Mercury, god of deception, god of tricksters, uh, endue thee with leasing, for thou speakst well of fools. Thank you, Olivia. Um, and uh, she has defended folly. There's many follies, as I've written here. There are many follies in this play. Well, the plot thickens now, because, not not knock at the door, here comes Cesario. And Maria is, um, Maria is announcing there's a young gentleman much desires to speak with you. Oh, from the Count Alcino, is it? Oh, I know not, madam. Tis a fair young man. It's interesting to see what's uh, what attracts Olivia. Well attended. He's got lots of people with him, so that means that he's he's quite important. Who of my people hold him in delay? It's Sir Toby, madam, your kinsman. Oh no, says Olivia. Fetch him off, I pray you. Another hunting reference there. Um, you know, get the dog off him. Fetch him off. He speaks nothing but madman. Fire on him. Madness is another theme in this play. But he's, he's mad. Oh, Sir Toby. No, I don't need a half-drunk Sir Toby talking to somebody who could be quite well-to-do or could be from us or could be from all. It's probably from Orsino. Uh, go you, Malvolio. If it be a suit from the Count, I'm sick or not at home. What you will. The title of the play. Whatever you, whatever you want. Uh, to dismiss it. Get rid of him. And then we have a little little affectionate chat with Festy. Now you see, sir, how your fooling grows old and people dislike it. Festy's pleased. Thou hast spoke for us, Madonna, as if thy eldest son should be a fool. Uh-oh, whose skull Jove cram with brains, for here he comes. One of thy kin has a most weak Pia Marta. Another name for a brain. Uh, oh, I hope if you, when you do have a son, I hope he's got lots of brains, because this kinsman of yours... 
hasn't got much of a brain, especially at the moment. And in comes Sir Toby. It's in the morning and he's already drunk, uh, probably f probably from last night. Remember, he went off to drink some canary with um, with Sir Andrew. Um, By mine honour, half drunk. What is he at the gate, cousin? Remember, I said what can mean who in those days, or it could mean here. What rank is he? You know, how important is he? That's that's of course key. Uh, that's important. I say everything's key. Sorry, uh, that's important too. Um, uh, gentlemen, a gentleman. What gentleman? Uh, says, says a gentleman here. Uh, oh. Plague of these pickle herring. And he sees Festy. How now, sot? A sot is a drunken man. He's talking to Festy, and he's very drunk, and he's living up to his name with his belch. Um, Festy, uh, you know, I, I remember, again, when I directed this, I had um, I had Sir Toby get very close to Festy. Sort of, How now? And breathe all over Festy. It's so, a so good Sir Toby. Oh, God, you stink. Um, as Olivia says, cousin, cousin, how have you come so early by this lethargy? Lethargy is, is tiredness, is, is, is um, uh, not being bothered to do anything. Uh, uh, lechery? I defy lechery. As one at the gate. Two vices are written there. Lethargy, lechery. Um, it's a Toby misunderstanding, mis mishearing. Too drunk to pay attention. Yes, I marry, uh, means by Mary. Um, what is he? Let it be the devil. Uh, and he will, I care not. Give me faith, say I. Uh, it's all one. Uh, that's all one, the phrase that we see later. Um, give me faith to protect me from the devil. I don't care if the devil's at the gate. Just give me faith, give me my religion to protect me. And off he goes. What's a drunken man like, fool? Festy. Clever fool, remember, making comments on actions that go on. It's like a drowned man, a fool and a madman. One draught above heat, one drink above heat makes him a fool. The second mads him, the third drowns him. Madness is important in this play, as I've said before. We're going to see that many times. Um, but also another reference to drowning, shipwrecks, drowned brother, etc. Go thou and seat the crowner, coroner. Let him sit on my cuz, let, let him, not literally, <laughs> sorry, I just had a sudden image in my head, but uh, let him sit on my cuz, uh, sit in, in judgment over my cuz, uh, over Sir Toby, for he's in the third degree of drink, he's drowned. Go look after him. Oh, he's but mad yet, Madonna. The fool shall look to the madman, as the fool does later in uh, the play, as I've written there in Act 4. Madam, yon young fellow swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. He takes on him to understand so much and therefore comes to speak with you. For that reason, he says he's here to speak to you, speak to you because you're sick. He, he's got an answer for everything. Remember, Cesario, Viola, witty, clever. She's doing her job. She was told to be importunate at the gate and she is being importunate at the gate. Um... I told him you were asleep. He seems to have a foreknowledge of that too, and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, lady? He's fortified against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak with me. Has been told so. And he says he'll stand at your door like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bench, but he'll speak with you. He's firm in his denial. What kind of man is he? Of mankind? What manner of my man? Very ill manner. He'll speak with you, will you or no? What personage in years is he? This is quite interesting. Oh, not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy, as a squash is before tis a peas cod. Or a codling, sorry, that should be codling, uh, when tis almost an apple. Tis with him in standing water between boy and man. Um... <laughs> coddling slang for testicles, great. Um, which, of course, Viola hasn't got. Um, but uh, coddling an unripe apple, uh, squash grows into a peas cod. Um, so, you know, we've got we've got this idea, as it says, standing water between boy and man. He's, he's, he's not a man yet, but he's more than a boy. He's very well favoured, speaks very shrewishly. 
shrilly like a woman. We know that. One would think his mother's milk was scarce out of him. Ooh, hang on a minute. Olivia said, I'm not going to see another man for seven years. Oh, let him approach, she says. Call him my gentlewoman. Rather cheekily, I wonder what attracts her. I have a very, very good feeling that she likes young men, as I've said already. Um, one would think his mother's milk was scarce out of him. She's quite intrigued by meeting this boy. Um, so Olivia, you know, that's obviously, a, she has a penchant for young men. Um, call him my gentlewoman. And I put here, does this suggest the first attraction Olivia feels for a young man? Uh, gentlewoman, my lady calls. Uh, give me my veil. Come throw it on my face. We'll once more hear Orsino's embassy. Um, the veil for mourning. Um, she probably should be wearing it anyway, but, you know, she's got to be heard. She's, her face has got to be seen. But she's going to be veiled. Um, and, and again, often in performance, uh, a lady, a Maria, or just Maria, they also put veils on uh, so that Violet is confused when she arrives. Um, and as you can see here, the Honourable Lady of the House, uh, which is she? Um, so confusion, as I've written there, confusion, comedy, appearance and reality. How can I tell who you are? How can I tell what's inside? Because I can only see the outside. Speak to me. I shall answer for her. Your will. And so back to drama. Um, just have a look at all those highlighted words there. Uh, stage metaphor, speech, penned, written. Uh, con, which means to learn off by heart. Uh, studied, I've learnt it. Out of my part, the part that I'm playing. Proceeding my speech, are you a comedian? Are you an actor? A comedian is another word for an actor. Um, Viola starts by playing a part, you know, even, well, obviously she's being a boy, but she's also got a speech that she's learned, and it's conventional, formal speech. Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty. I pray you, tell me if this be the lady of the house, for I never saw her. I'd be loath to cast away my speech, for besides that it is excellently well penned, I have taken great pens to, uh, pains to con it. Good beauties, let me sustain no scorn. I'm very comfortable, sensitive, even to the least sinister unit usage. Usually what happens is, is that, that Maria perhaps giggles at, at, at him um, or snorts. Let me sustain no scorn. Uh, look, I want to know I'm talking to Olivia because I've learned this speech off by heart. It's really good, this speech, and I don't, I don't want to waste it. You know, can, I, can I know which one is, is Olivia? Whence came you, sir? Uh, I can say little more than I have studied, and that question's out of my part. Um, she maintains uh, quite a lot of mystery there. A good gentle one, give me mod modest assurance, if you be the lady of the house, that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? <laughs> no, my profound heart, and yet, by the very fangs of malice, I swear I am not that I play. Beautiful dramatic irony. She is not what she plays. Are you the lady of the house? I do not usurp myself, I am. Replace, usurp. Um, we usually talk about usurping the crown, taking it away. Um, improperly used, as I've written here. Um, well, most certain, if you are she, you do usurp yourself. For what is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve. I said we come to this. There's Carpe Diem. Your beauty is to bestow, not to reserve. Don't keep it to yourself bestow it on others. Uh, and look, she's fallen out of her part for a moment. This is from my commission. Whoops, uh, that's me being, that's me being Viola, and um, forgetting that I've got a role to play. I will on with my speech in your praise, and then show you the heart of the message. Oh, come to what is important, Int. I forgive you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it, and it is poetical. It is the more like to be feigned. I pray you, keep it in. Um, poetry, this links with Puritans again, poetry is starting to be seen as, uh, as a type of art that is, you know, artifice, it's, it, it's humans showing off their skills instead of giving everything to God and, uh, and putting everything down to God's will and, and God's, um, doing. 
<clears throat> so poetry being feigned, poetry is a lie, um, is, is a suggestion there. Um, I pray you keep it in. I heard you were saucy at my gates and allowed your approach rather to, rather to wonder at you than hear you. Well, that's not true. If you be not mad, be gone. Madness again. If you have reason, be brief. Tis not that time of moon with me to make one in so skipping a dialogue. I'm not mad. Luna. Lunatic. It's not that time of moon. Um, skipping a dialogue. You know, uh, banter. Unshaped dialogue. Maria joins in. She presumes that this is what Olivia feels, so she's helping her out. Oh, will you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. Viola, clever, witty language, instantly plays along with the metaphor that Maria has introduced. <laughs> no good swabber. I am to hull here a little longer. Maria is lower in rank. Uh, I've put here, note her wit and swiftness of retort. She's very quick, instantly. No, good swabber, who are you? Yeah, you're just, you're just a gentlewoman. I'm not here to talk to you. Some mollification for your giant, your guard, sweet lady. Can you calm her down? Sort, sort your guard out. Um, tell me your mind. I'm a messenger. Uh, tell me your mind. Yeah, not interested in Maria. Tell me your mind. Sure, you have some hideous matter to deliver when the courtesy of it is so fearful. You've been pretty strong in your delivery here. Speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. Peace, in other words. My words are as full. Oh, as fun. Sorry about that mistake. As full of peace as matter. Full of matter. Full of goodness. Full of, bi full of business. Important. Yet you began rudely. What are you? What would you? Again, identity. Who are you? Or what rank are you? What nature are you? I can't work you out. Yeah, I, I, I was rude, says Viola. The rudeness that hath appeared in me, I have learned from my entertainment. Well, you know, I had Sir Toby at the gate, for goodness sake. What I am and what I would are as secret as maidenhead. Maidenhead, virginity. Nicely ironic, okay, because this is Viola talking, albeit addressed as a boy. To your ears, divinity, to any other's profanation. So divinity, a holy word. For you, the words that I am about to speak are holy. Anybody else, it becomes profane, because it's not meant for them, okay? And here starts the metaphor of religion and I said about books, we move to uh, the idea of a, a Bible reading um, in church and uh, from the word divinity, religion. I've highlighted here all the words there that fit in with that. OK, so let's let's just hear this little um, it, just to put it into context. You know, you, you used to have readings in church. Um, I know not, not so many people go to church nowadays, but you used to have readings in church and it would be, you know, um, the, the, the first the first lesson is taken from the book of Corinthians chapter one, beginning at verse 16 or something like that. Um, so um, that's why we've got this. Give us the place alone. We will hear this divinity. Oh, everybody else is going now. She's on her own with uh, Cesario. Now, sir, what is your text? Bible text, as I put there. Most sweet lady. A comfortable doctrine. Much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by the method in the first of his heart. Oh, I have read it. It's heresy. Have you no more to say? So nice little picking up a metaphor again, cleverness with words, uh, Bible text, comfortable doctrine, comfortable words. Uh, it's actually in the prayer book, comfortable words. Um, they give comfort, a doctrine that gives comfort, uh, religious ideas that give comfort. Uh, where's your text? Where, where's it come from in the book? Or seen as bosom, his heart, his, in, in his breast. Oh, what chapter? To answer by the method, no test, Viola, okay, I'll play the metaphor, I'll play with those words with you, okay. Um, to answer by the method, the first of his heart, haha, good answer, Viola. Oh no, says Olivia. Heresy, 
heresy is going against the true faith. It's rubbish. No, no, no. Don't like that. Don't like that doctrine. Don't like that religion. Is that all you've got to say? Cool. Don't think much of this so far, says Olivia. And Viola then steps right out of her role. Almost uh, possibly saying to herself, I want to see what the competition's like. Good madam, let me see your face. Olivia picks up on this. Hang on a minute. It's, that's out of your, out of your part. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You know, did, did he say that? You, did Asino tell you to do that? You are now out of your text. But we'll draw the curtain. Back to the picture, my dear, like Mistress Mal. And show you the picture. Look you, sir. Such a one I was this present. In other words, now. It's not well done. A mm, little bit arrogant. I mean... Yeah, she may be beautiful, but you don't have to sort of tell her, tell him. And she unveils her face. Viola probably saying to herself, oh no, she's really beautiful. What am I going to do about this? I want Orsino and she's so much more beautiful than I am. Look at her answer. Excellently done. A little cheeky. God did all. Well, oh, you had a bit of plastic surgery. No, uh, have you, you know, is it makeup? Um, are you, uh, you know, are you adorned like, of course, Elizabethan rich women would be? Um, <laughs> I've written there, ooh, cheeky. Um, and um, yes, oh, sorry, yes, going back to that, such a one I was this present. On, on a picture, there would be the date, um, uh, perhaps, that, that it was made. So this present now. Um, oh, tis ingrained, sir. Twill endure wind and weather. This is no makeup. This is this is ingrained. This is my face. <sighs> Damn, says Viola. Tis beauty truly blent, blended. Um, I've written there, Viola trying to make up for the slight insults. Says, oh, God did all. Um, it's actually beautifully natural and blended by nature. Tis beauty truly blend, whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive if you will lead these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. I talked about that. Copy, carpe diem, leave a copy, have a child. Okay, uh, Viola's changed to verse. Um, perhaps as her passion grows, um... The, the zeal she wants to put into her words. She's she's now, remember, remember, I can speak in many kinds of music, I think was, a, was roughly the quotation. Um, so uh, she is jealous. She's jealous of this beautiful woman. Um, and, but also we've got carpe diem here. You are the cruelest she alive if you will lead these graces to the grave. Nice alliteration there. You lead these graces to the grave. What a beautiful balance. Grace, grave. Um, and leave the world no copy. Have a child. Oh no, says Olivia. I'm gonna play a new trick now. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a list. I'm gonna give you an inventory. This is it's, uh, written here. It's like a blazon. A blazon uh, actually comes from coats of arms, where where the the images on a coat of arms would would blazon your uh, who you were, your um, your standing in society, and so on, and and your interests. Uh, they'd all be on a coat of arms. But it was also it became in literature, um, particularly, of course, you know we have to say you know male literature. Um, it was also uh, say poetry or uh, a piece of writing that uh, listed almost the, the the attributes of the woman um, from her toes to her hair um, famously of course you'll, you'll know one of Shakespeare's sonnets uh, which plays on that uh, my mistress eyes are nothing like the sun so he's he's of course uh, twisting that um, but Olivia is giving her own blazon her own list her own inventory oh sir I will not be so hard-hearted I will give out divers schedules of my beauty. I'm going to write it down, send them out to society. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving copies, written copies. It shall be inventoried. Every particle and utensil labelled to my will as item, two lips, in different red. Item, two grey eyes, with lids to them. Item, one neck, one chin, and so forth. Were you sent hither to praise me? And Viola won't be funny 
this is more important. Look how well she does her job. Look how she pleads for Orsino. Olivia wants to make a joke of it. Viola says, no, I see you what you are. You are too proud. But if you were the devil, you are fair. Um, proud, the devil, pride comes before the fall. Lucifer fell because of pride. My lord and master loves you. Oh, such love could be but recompensed. Though you were crowned the non pariah of beauty. He, his love is big enough for the most beautiful, the, um, the most unparalleled beauty in the universe. How does he love me? Notice the completed line. non pariah of beauty, how does he love me? Um, interestingly sort of linking with that. I tried to say it in a way that I think I would want an actress to say it, which is intrigue now. Intrigue not for Orsino, but for Cesario. Um, love this, if you don't mind me just having a little read. Um, how does he love me? With adorations, fertile tears, with groans that thunder love, with sighs of fire. There's passion. I put here note use of sound. Groans that thunder, sighs of fire. Just beautiful sound there, beautiful assonance, beautiful alliteration, perhaps even slightly on onomatopoeic. Um, so yeah, it, it's this is proper love, says Cesario. Hmm. We probably don't don't think so, but um, Viola's doing her job, as I said. Um, yes, oh, I put the elements here as well: thunder, fire, air, tears, water, um, thunder, air, fire. Um, the beautiful little couplet. We've got we got a better we got a better line, better speech coming up, even even more than that. Your Lord does know my mind. I cannot love him, yet I suppose him virtuous, know him noble, of great estate, of fresh and stainless youth, in voices well divulged, free, learned and valiant, and in dimension and the shape of nature a gracious person, but yet I cannot love him, he might have took his answer long ago. Um, voices well divulged, uh, almost like votes, uh, people's opinions speak well of him. Um, and. Um, He's, he's got all the right proportions. I know he's a good bloke. I know he's virtuous. I know he's noble, but I just don't love him. And I wish he'd leave me alone. If I did love you in my master's flame, with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial, I would find no sense. I would not understand it. And here, I've highlighted it. I think it's yeah, uh, sorry, I should just say passion again, master's flame, the flames of passion, uh, such a deadly life, uh, uh, such a, a deathly, you know, close to death with, with his passions, in his suffering for you. Here's the turning point, I think. If we haven't already had it slightly in how does he love me, we've now got it in, mm, why? What would you what would you do then? If I did, Viola said, you know, if I did love you, oh, okay then, what would you do? Olivia is clearly getting hooked. And what is she falling in love with? Yes, she likes young men, but she's falling in love with the language. And here is one of Shakespeare's most beautiful speeches, um, uh, the Willow Cabin speech. And you know, again, if you don't mind, I'll give it, give, give it a little voice. Um, and it is this that makes Olivia fall in love with him. Why, what would you? Or rather, why, what would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate, and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contemned love, and sing them loud even in the dead of night. Halloo your name to the reverberate hills, and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia, oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You might do much. She's caught. 
Willow cabin, note there, temporary sh shelter, but also willow is for sorrow. Call upon my soul, that's Olivia. Loyal Cantons, songs. Um, the babbling gossip of the air is echo, uh, but listen to the sounds. It's, it's just genius, absolute genius. People say, you know, what thinking about Shakespeare? Yeah, it's all old language, I don't understand it. Um, you know, cry out, Olivia, oh, like the echo, the babbling gossip of the air, the echo, the word echoes, Olivia, oh, amazing, stunning writing. And no wonder Olivia falls for him, him says Olivia, you might do much. She's hooked. What's your parentage? So it's important, I know. Are you just a servant? Or, you know, can I possibly dally with the idea of having a relationship with you? Cross-class, cross-class relationship. Olivia doesn't mind that too much, as we'll see later. Uh, above my fortunes, yet, yet my state is well. I, I am a, a gentleman, nicely ironic, um, but she is of gentle birth. So, um, get you to your lord, says Olivia. I cannot love him. Let him send no more, unless, <clears throat> perchance, you come to me again? Tell me how he takes it. Fare you well. Thank you for your pain. Spend this for me. I am no feed post lady. Keep your purse. I don't want your money. I'm not here for pay. I'm here because I'm doing my job for Orsino. He loves you, and you need to listen. My master, not myself, m m my master, not myself, lacks recompense. And this is a bit bitter. Love make his heart a flint that you shall love. Let your fervour, like my master's, be placed in contempt. Farewell, fair cruelty. Nice um, little little rhyming couplet there, but nice farewell, fair cruelty. Um, and love make his heart a flint that you shall love. Cupid shoots lead arrows at you. I hope you don't, I hope when you fall in love with somebody, you are recompensed in this way. It's my master who needs recompense, not me. I don't need payment. Orsino does. And she goes quite angrily, powerfully. Olivia's alone on stage. Olivia is in love. Uh, put here references of Blaise and again coat of arms reference as well as poetry. Viola's behaviour has proved him a gentleman. She she does so it's like she's her coat of arms is in her language and her behaviour. Um, that that blazon uh, that that was the blazon for her. And she repeats some of the phrases. What's your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn, thou art. Thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, actions, and spirit do give thee fivefold blazon. Not too fast. Soft. Soft. So fivefold blazon, five elements on the coat of arms. Um, but slow down. Slow down. Not too fast. Oh, my heart's pitter pattering. Not too fast. Soft, soft. Slow down. Um, in the ring speech, which will be in the next video, is she speaking in starts distractedly? It's a bit of broken language here, broken broken sentences. Thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, actions and spirit. Not too fast. Soft, soft. <laughs> okay. Unless the master were the man. Unless I didn't have an interest in Orsino, but was interested in his man. Again, nicely ironic. How now? Fancy that. Even so quickly may one catch the plague. Another reference to the plague. But I've caught the plague of love. Just like that. Instant. Contagious. Methinks I feel this youth's perfections with an invisible and subtle strength. Stealth, sorry. To creep in at mine eyes. Uh, love by looking. Viola comments on this. Um, you know, it, it is his looks that got me first. It, 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 is this youth's perfections with an invisible and subtle stealth, subtle stealth sibilance there um, to creep in at mine eyes. What am I going to do about it? Pfft, nothing. Let it be. I'll let it happen. I don't care. I'm not going to you know, stuff that morning lark. OK, I'm not doing any morning now. I'm in love. Um, and she calls for Malvolio. What ho, Malvolio? Yeah, madam, at your service. Run after that same peevish messenger. She's pr pretending now. Peevish. She wasn't peevish. She loves him. Um, but she can't tell Malvolio that. Okay. 
the county's man, the Count Orsino's man, he left this ring behind him. No, he didn't. Would I or not? Tell him I'll none of it. Desire him not to flatter with his lord, nor hold him up with hopes. I am not for him. If that the youth will come this way tomorrow, I'll give him reasons for it. Hi thee, Malvolio. Hurry. Usually it's a joke. Malvolio sort of walks very slowly. That is him hurrying. Hi means hurry. Um, so, yeah, if, if Arlo wants to come back tomorrow you know, and tell me how Orsino took the news, um, you know, don't hold him up with hopes, don't give him false hopes, um, but, you know, Cesario comes back, that would be nice. <sighs> Madam, I will. And we finish again with not a rhyming couplet. In fact, we've got, we've got tomorrow Malvolio find mind oh so so we've got three rhymes there um this is similar to viola's aside a uh, little mini soliloquy at the end of the scene with orsino um i do i know not what and fear to find mine eye too great a flatterer for my mind surface mine eye what i'm seeing is it flattering is it too flattering is it true fate show thy force Ourselves we do not owe, what is decreed must be, and be this so. I'm leaving it to fate. Remember, Viola left it to time. I'm not in control of my destiny. Ourselves we do not owe. I don't own my um, myself. Something else is in control of that. If this is decreed, be this so. I'm just going to let it happen. Um, the morning is gone. And that is the end of that amazing scene. And we're into Act 2 for the next video. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful. And uh, see you in the next one.